Oh my gosh, that video looks professional. Your camera is amazing. It must be huge and expensive. How did you get that bird to cooperate? I can't take that huge camera and expensive lens out travel vlogging. Can I? Yes, you can. Hi friends, today I'm talking with you in depth about what I often mention as one of my favorite lenses and showing you just what it can do. This lens paired with this camera system is one of the smallest and most affordable available to capture the fun cinematic footage that you see here. It's great for bokeh filled B-roll, pretty portrait style shots, product shots, night shots, and low light shots. Shots like this are fantastic to sprinkle into travel vlogs or any videos that aim to impress. By the end of this video, you'll understand exactly how to best use this lens to capture beautiful cinematic footage that will seriously level up your vlogs. So this is a prime lens known as the Nifty 50. It is the only lens with a widely well-known nickname as far as I know. It's also known as a portrait lens because it captures amazing portraits. Mm, we tried here. The beauty of this lens is the large 1.8 aperture, which lets in a ton of light and allows you to nicely blur out the background. And it's not just any background blur. You're going to get nice creamy bokeh with this lens because it's designed to create these lovely little circles with its seven rounded diaphragm blades. That's like the inside mechanics of the lens. And the best part is this lens, the one made by Canon, is only $125, which is a great price for such a professional looking effect. Sony also makes a Nifty 50 as well, currently priced at $225. Still very cheap for a Sony lens. Now, a prime lens in general is going to have a fixed focal length. It's also known as a fixed lens. That means that it cannot zoom, which doesn't sound cool at first, but there are benefits. One, the image is sharper and the quality is higher, thanks to the manufacturers being able to focus on perfecting that one focal length without having to work the zooming capabilities into it. Two, it's smaller and cheaper, again, because it was more simple to make with less moving parts. Three, it forces you to rethink the framing in your work. Rather than just relying on a zoom to adapt your camera to situations, you'll actually have to move to reframe things. This act of moving around while filming is one major difference you'll notice between professional videographers and amateurs just holding a camera. You gotta move. So about that focal length. 50 millimeter is a well-loved focal length, being very close to what you see with the human eye. Now, I'm using this lens on my Canon M50, which is my favorite new mirrorless camera by Canon, and just like their prosumer level line of DSLRs, it has the APS-C crop sensor. So, when you put this lens on a crop sensor camera, it actually becomes an 80 mm due to the crop factor. This isn't necessarily better than a 50 mm, it actually feels a bit close sometimes, but all you have to do is back up a bit, or use the lens on a full frame camera. You have options here. And since the Canon M50 being a mirrorless has a smaller mount, in order to use the EF mount lenses, you will need an adapter, which is no big deal. This one's about $50. Super easy, it just clicks on there. It seems like a pain, but in fact, I love using the EF mount lenses on my M50, and this whole entire setup costs a grand total of around $825. That is an amazing price to create this level of video. Now, if you already wanna go and check everything out, there's some links in the video description that'll take you straight to the products. But if you wanna learn a bit more, here are some things you need to know about using this lens. First, it's important that you set the lens to the 1.8 aperture to get this effect. And when you do, you'll find that there is a very shallow depth of field. That means that just one small thing is in focus and the rest is not. It's beautiful, really. You can either use the focus ring in manual mode or touch the screen to tap what you would like to focus on. It's super fun to rack focus between two different parts of the shot within the same shot. And you can do this simply by touching the screen, on this camera at least, not all cameras. It's also fun in less precise situations, like when you're out filming ferns, to just let the autofocus take over and bounce between things. I do warn you though, it can get a bit wild at moments and need to be reeled back in. I love filming nature with this lens and it can really make you feel like you're in this wild, whimsical environment deep in the forest until you come back to reality and remember that you're just in a neighborhood. You can get pretty close up to things with this lens, but the minimum focus distance is 14 inches, so keep that in mind. Another thing to note is that stabilization is very important with these types of shots because there's no stabilization built into the lens. So be sure to use that camera strap around your neck to create some tension in the strap and exhale during shots to relieve some tension in your hold. And of course, you can always use a gimbal. A gimbal would be great. I need a gimbal. In many of these shots, I'm also using a neutral density filter. I've got an ND8 on this one. So this is basically sunglasses for your camera, and what it does is darken everything up. 
You might ask, why on earth would you want to darken everything up? Well, the reason is because when you have that super wide aperture, it's gonna let in a ton of light, and sometimes it lets in too much light. So when you've got your ISO all the way down, sometimes it's way too bright, and in order to keep the aperture at 1.8, you need that neutral density filter. So it's a cheap thing to buy, and I'll link to it below as well. Now in this video, I've also applied some other effects like slow motion, I'm sure you've noticed, to help stabilize things further, as well as color grading with my very own video filters or LUTs. If you missed my recent video on getting awesome color in your vlogs, then feel free to check that out. And also know that I recently made my LUTs packs available for purchase so you can get the same color effects in your videos applied quickly and easily. You can find info on the LUTs at amy.tv shop as well as in the video description below. And like I said, all the links to these lenses and everything we talked about are in the video description and in the blog post that accompanies this video on amy.tv. I do hope you guys enjoyed this nice, visually soothing chat today. I would love to hear what you think about the Nifty 50 lens and if you've ever used one. So go ahead and leave me a comment and let me know what you think. And if there's anyone you know who might benefit from learning about this lens or learning about anything else I teach on this channel, please go ahead and share this video. If you're not yet subscribed to AMA TV, please consider doing so. I create travel videos and provide video production instructions so you can level up your travel vlogging skills. I'm Alicia and I will see you all next Friday. Bye. What do you have? Abba. Will you hold it? Hold it. Hold it up. Hold it up. <laughs> no, it is not a ball. Be nice to the lens. It's a good lens.